I felt scared, alone, helpless, frustrated, and just like I was never going to get better. I would, uh, there was a stage when I would rather have died than eat food. I kind of wanted to get better when I thought about my future because I just thought, well, if I carry on going the way I am, I'm not going to get to uni, I'm never going to go on holiday again, I'm going to have a rubbish relationship with my family, my friends, everything, and I'll just be on my own. And I thought, well, I'd rather be, like, happy and have friends and family around me and know that I'm loved and not have all these negative feelings even if I don't feel that I look good, then who cares? At least I'll have, like, people around me. There were definitely, like, points in recovery when I had a real big low. Like, I'd put on a certain amount of weight and then the next week I'd lose that weight again and I'd be so frustrated because I'd just put it on and it had taken so much effort. So there were, like, there were times when it was good and times when it was bad. And there were feelings when I thought, yeah, I'm getting my life back, this is amazing. And then there were times when I thought, look at me, I'm a mess, I need to go back to how I was. But then you just look at around you and you see your friends and how happy they are. And they're all, they've got a healthy relationship with food, so I think I kind of just use them as role models, really. Looking back on it now, it all seems like a bit of a blur because when you're ill, you're just sort of in your own world and you don't you don't realise the consequences of your actions because you're only focused on what you're doing. You don't think about what's going on around you. So I think you feel a lot, you feel lonely because nobody else understands you, and you feel quite isolated. And I think you're paranoid because you think oh, everyone's staring at me, everyone's talking about me, even though they're not. It's important that the sufferer admits they have a problem and that they're not allowed to just carry on the way they are because if they've got someone there telling them that they need help, then they're more likely to start telling themselves that. At the start, I didn't realise that I needed help. And even when I did come to accept that, even some days I didn't feel that it was serious enough to be made such a fuss about. I, didn't, I thought that the professionals would just making a big deal out of something that they didn't need to make a big deal out of. At first it was really scary because there's always a part of you that doesn't want to let it go because it's safe and it's what you're used to. But when you start to realise that when you're, when you're better you can do so much, you can go out with your friends, you can have fun, your family are happier, you just realise there's so much positive stuff that comes with getting better and you have to focus on that and not think about when you were ill and think about anything that made you happy then because nothing did. Because I was so determined, I was, I would just eat and eat. That's all I did. I, the voices just went away in my head. It was really weird. I was sort of. I was just determined to beat the the illness. Obviously, it has its set, setbacks when you like put on weight, then you lose it again. Um, and also, just because you, like you do have a, you, I did have a fear of food that it sort of was hard to go back to it. But obviously, when I started putting on the weight, I did feel like much better in myself because I had like I started like growing boobs and stuff. So <laughs> it was good, and I sort of started. I went and tried on a few bikinis and I looked quite good in them, I suppose, so, yeah, it was good. I had more energy as well from eating all the food that I was eating and just gave me more energy and more, like, um, sort of, I was more aware and I wasn't so withdrawn and everything. And people sort of commented and, like, wow, you look a lot more healthier than you did. Um, you've got sort of, like, the pinkiness back in your cheeks and everything and just stuff like that, people commenting on, and how you feel, it's just really good. I'd weigh myself at like five points in the day. Sometimes, like, come on, I'd get on the scales after like ten minutes of like, oh, that's gone up. I can't eat tea, or that's gone up. I can't have a drink now, and and I was I got really obsessed with the scales, and it took so much to get rid of that obsession. It's important to just keep going and 
remembering who you are and you're still there underneath the illness and just using your friends and family around you to help pull you back up again. So I think that determination and that thinking, no one's going to do it for you, you have to do it yourself, has got me to where I am today. Like many other people, we have recovered from our eating disorders. You don't have to live with it. Tell someone about your concerns, get the help you need. And remember, you can always contact BEAT 